Jesus, the Word of God, took flesh, came into the earth through a dressing room called the womb of Mary, and wore flesh and passed into the earth and did the substitutionary work of the cross, went back into heaven, took our flesh, our body, took it into heaven, and then released the spirit that is in heaven into the earth. He had polarized the normal order of things so that there is a member of the Godhead that has flesh and there is a member of the spirit head that is among flesh that's why Jesus was in a hurry to go because the church will not be born until something from the Godhead is here and something from here is present with the Godhead so the church is the only institution that has presence both on earth and in heaven there is a member of the Godhead that has flesh do you understand? the moment you point a finger at that institution you insulted God then you knelt down to pray to him you have ridiculed the errand Come on. of prayer I speak apostolically to the body of Christ I'm not speaking just to the people in this room Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There was a man by the name, you know, you know I told you that every time we've moved, we're new in this place. And I told you that every time we've moved places, God has always left signs. Yes. We had always been followed by an envoy. Something had always pointed. There's always been signs to show that. The favor of the Lord is on us and we're in the right place. Yes, sir. And when we got here, it was named Nehemiah Apostolic Christian. It is Nehemiah Apostolic Christian Center. And we came in at the time when Nigeria just became 58. Yeah. We, we knew that what the Lord was telling us was that we were supposed to be the Nehemiah generation. The people who will rebuild the ancient ruins of many generations. As a Nehemiah would. So we dedicated every service in the month of October to waging war by praise and decree. Praise and decree so that our part in the puzzle is complete. Yeah. We kept you standing for two hours. You were not just trying to feel good. You were paying the price for something prophetic to come full cycle. Something that has been lingering to be complete. That's what we're doing this month. And that's why you mustn't miss the meetings this month. Because by praise and decree, there's, God is forging something. Yeah. He's forging something in the spirit that's powerful. Eyes haven't seen it. Yes, sir. Ears haven't heard. Have, have you read the story of Nehemiah? I'll save you the details because I'm not teaching tonight. I'm just giving you prophetic direction. And I'm, I'm helping you pray all right. I'll get to that. But if you read the story of Nehemiah, you discover in scripture that Nehemiah was one of the captives. Is that true? He was a prophet, but he was a captive. Taken to a foreign land and made the cup bearer of the king. Nehemiah 1 verse 11, quickly. Nehemiah 1 verse 11, something like that. If you read verse 11, you will see that he was the king's cup bearer. Now, but there were some people who escaped from the exile. When they were going into exile, some people escaped. Some people were able to hide and remain in Jerusalem. But it was worse for them that they were not sent to exile because Jerusalem was burnt down. Its gate was destroyed. There was, so there was no food. There was nobody to trade with. So the people who stayed back, who didn't join the captivity, were worse than those who became captives. So a man by the name Nehemiah, who was, who was of, of a prophetic bloodline, used to think in the middle of the night about his brethren that although were not captives, they were captives to the elements. Mm. Because there was nothing to survive on. <laughs> and the burden became so strong that although he was the cupbearer, now you need to know what it means to be a cupbearer in ancient time. What it meant is that you are the king's security system. He eats nothing, drinks nothing until he passed through you. Just in case there is a coup and somebody intends to do what they did to our body. <laughs> and you will die instead. Because you will taste the drink, you will eat the food before the king eats it. Is that correct? Yeah. 
So as the king's cupbearer, it was normal for the king to look at him and determine if the wine is good. So this is, this is the point. He was supposed to take the king's cup and take from the, wines, the wine of the king's cup and become kind of intoxicated. When the king looks at him and the wine does to Nehemiah what the king wants the wine to do to him, mm. then the king takes the wine. Mm. So you take the wine and wait a while and you are observed. You eat the food and you are put in a corner. You are the guinea pig. The lab rat. Yeah, the lab rat. <laughs> so the king had always observed that every time he looked at him after he took the wine, he became drunk. And so the king declares the party open. Our food is safe. Mm -hmm. Let's eat. But on this day, read, 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 read Nehemiah 1 verse 11. It says, oh, oh Lord, I beseech thee, let now thy head be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servant who desire to fear thy name. Go on. What is this? The King James. This is chapter 2. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, 20th year of Artaxerxes the king, that the wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Go on. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing that thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of the heart. Then I was so afraid. You know what happened? For the first time, somebody took drink for the king. And instead of getting drunk, he was more sad. Wine was supposed to intoxicate him, was supposed to make him merry, was supposed to stir him up. But the king saw a dimension of burden that squashed the power of wine. So the king looked at him and said, you're not sick. We don't use sick people for this job. How come you drank of my alcohol, the royal alcohol, the 99.9% one, the one for the king, king's vodka? <laughs> oh, 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 Kinga. <laughs> yes. And you still dare to be sad. How? How? How is it? How is it possible that you are still sad? And then the Bible declares that the king began to ask him, What do you want? This is your heart is sick. And then he said, he began to talk about the ruins in his life. Go on, go on, verse. Let the king live forever. Why should not my continent be sad? When the city, one, the place of my father's sepulchres. Two, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. With fire. So he had gotten to a point in his burden that nothing physical could change his state, because he was more in touch with the need of his people than he was with his belly. Come on. The prayer that shifts things. Is not the materialistic prayer. It's the prayer that's coming from a heart that is more in touch with the need than with the personal dysfunction. This guy was in slavery, was in captivity, yet he was prophetic. He wasn't sad about his captivity, he wasn't sad about his slavery, he was sad about the state of his nation. And when they asked him to describe it, he said three things. He said, I'm sad about the city. I'm sad about the place of my father's sepulchre. And I'm sad about the gates. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Now, let me give you, let me, let, me, let me journey with you into what this means. What Nehemiah did is what strategic believers, I'm talking about the strategic church in nation building, is what strategic believers in every sphere of influence are supposed to be doing with their vocation. Mm. Let me show you what he did. He took the wine that the king was supposed to eat and blessed it so that when he gave the wine to the king, the king had no choice than to consider his countenance. Yes, mm -hmm. He was prophetic. He knew that the blessing of Abraham was corn, wine, and oil. Wine was one of the tokens of the blessing. So one day he discovered what happened is the burning, the anointing was so strong. And the moment he shared a drink with the king, it was like the spirit of God, like wine, journeyed through the cup. 
and make the wow. king do what God was going to do. Wow. Because he asked, he told the king, I want to go to my land. He said, really? How long will it take? Go. He said, that's not enough. I want letters from all the governors between here and my land so that they'll let me pass. He said, is that all you want? He said, yeah. he said I also want men. Yeah. men. He said, that's all you want. He said, I also want things to build with. Yeah. That's all you want. Take it. You know why he transferred it? Mm. It was not the day he prayed. Mm. It was the day his burden was strong enough to give something else to the king. Other than wine. Come out of us. He had served wine all his life in captivity. Mm, 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 mm. Nothing changed. Mm. The day his body became so strong Adabasso. that wine could not shift him. The wine he gave the king shifted the king. Mm. <laughs> the very ordinary things in his hand by which he did everyday business. Wow. 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 The very ordinary things he traded in life with. Wow. Wow. Why the things which with God gave the king another? Don't you know that it was a king too that was drunk with a certain kind of wine, the wine of Jezebel, that asked that lady, that kid, what do you want? Yeah. And the mother came and told her, he said, ah, this one prophet has been trying to kill. The spirit of Jezebel has been trying to kill him. His name is John the Baptist. Ask for his head. There is a connection between the wine and the king, and the, and the, between the king and the wine of kings. The strategic church, boy, is the church that has come into so great alignment that ordinary things are used for supernatural purposes. Yeah. When our fathers delivered the gospel to us, they delivered it to us in ties and suits. And somehow we almost began to feel Come on. like the spectacular was inside the pocket square somewhere. Come on. And the huge bless you. <laughs> and the pot bellies. It seems like the more anointed you are. Glory. The more the pot, it just looked like as the anointing.